how was the shopping trip? When was the last time you went shopping with your mother? I, uh, when I was 10. She dragged me to every store in Boston, then we got on a train to go to New York because she couldn't find the right shoes to buy me. Yeah, well, thank goodness there aren't as many uh, stores in Lambier as there are in Boston. And I told her that the trains don't stop to New York here anymore. Is that bad, huh? Hunter, it was a nightmare. I want a divorce. Kevin, I'd like to go on another 40, 50 years, but the cards are stacked against me. But if you have the operation, at least you'll have a chance. The odds are against it, Kevin. Your dad has known about this for a while. He's had time to, to think of the best way that we can deal with this. By giving up? Don't you want him to fight this? Not if he can't win. This is his decision to make. We have to, we have to accept that, and we have to deal with it. We have to support him, Kev. Look, he needs us now. That's why I asked him to tell the family, because he's going to need our support and our love and our strength. And in return, he will give us his strength. Hey, you tell me you're going to the beauty parlor. Oh, Asa, I was just about to leave, darling. Fine, you leave. I just got here. I'm going to find out why all these people are here having a family meeting without me. And why are they all crying? This looks like a wake. instead of putting on the charade for your mother, I would demand a divorce. Forget it. Guthrie's don't get divorces. It's unseemly and indicates a lack of commitment. Oh, yeah? Well, then I demand that we live in China or Australia or as far away from your mother as we possibly could get. Andy, I'm sorry, okay? I had no idea this would backfire on us. Us? Hunter, me. I'm the one that went shopping. Oh. I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. I don't know. I mean, why can't we just be honest with her? Why can't we tell her the truth? Then we wouldn't have this, you know, surprises, these disasters. Look, Andy, I have tried to tell my mother the truth for years, okay? But she just will not take no for an answer. Yeah, well, I can see what you must have been going through for years. I mean, I don't blame you for wanting to run away from home. I don't blame you for never wanting to go back there. Your mother is suffocating. I'm sorry, I'm sure she, you know, means well, and, you know, it's okay, she has Andy, a good it's heart. Okay. All right, you're not telling me anything I haven't already felt at least a thousand times. Well, so, show me what you bought to wear tonight. You're not going to want to see it. Show me. Fine, but maybe you want to sit down. Okay, here it is. Oh, no. It's isn't it? Oh. oh, my father's gonna love it. What are you kidding? I'm gonna look like an old Victorian maid in this thing. Oh, that's why he'll love it. And he's gonna love you. And there's no way we're gonna convince them that you don't belong in the family. They're gonna want to bring you back to Boston and make you a permanent daughter-in-law. Talk about backfiring. This is turning into a total disaster. Well, maybe and uh maybe not. You know, I think I have a way to uh, get your parents out of your life once and for all. Darling, please, come out on the terrace and I'll explain everything to you. No, you tell me now. Something terrible has happened. Is it Joey, Jessica? Pa, uh, they're in school. They're fine. Who are you? I'm Sandra Hall. I'm a friend of Clint's. And mine. This is about me, isn't it? You call them all together to tell some bad news about me. 
No, Asa, that's not why we... No, tell me the truth, Larry. I'm not some two-year-old has to be coddled. I don't like anybody talking behind my back. Asa, 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 we're not talking about you. This meeting has really nothing to do with you, except maybe indirectly. Then why wasn't I invited? I'm head of this family, in case you all forgot. No, we didn't forget that, Pa. I see, I see. You thought you couldn't share what you were crying about because my heart couldn't take it. You're responsible for this, Larry. You got her so terrified, she's gonna think I'm gonna drop dead if she says anything to upset me. Pa, come on, let's go outside. Do you think Asa can deal with this? I hope so, Vicky. Glenn, you know I'm as strong as an ox. I'm not about to kick the bucket anytime soon. And I just hate being treated, treated like some invalid. Pa, look, maybe I made the wrong decision. I'm sorry. I'll tell you, I'm not going to forgive either one of you for this. Darling, it's very difficult for Clint. Please, let him tell you. What is going on, son? Look at Paul, you remember when Jamie Sanders shot me? Well, <clears throat> there were a couple fragments of the bullet that the doctors couldn't remove. How the hell could I forget you went blind? The fragment shifted, you got your sight back. That's right, yes. Your, your sight is affected again? The fragments shifted again, Paul, and I don't know how... No, it Clint, please. Give me the bottom line. Tell me, are you going blind? Please, darling, let him tell you in his own way. I'm sorry, son. Go, go ahead. Go on. Sweetheart, I understand your anger, you know. Your father said he was very angry when the doctors told him, but then he found a way to deal with it. He's not dealing with it. He's just giving up. No. Dad always told us never to run away from a fight. Yeah, tough words until he has to stand and fight. Now, Kevin, that's not fair. I don't care. How could you let this happen? I mean, why didn't you try to talk him into it, having the operation? He'll listen to you. He'll do anything you tell him. Sweetheart, I can't tell him what to do with his life. He has no right to just die on us like this. He's got to try. He's got to have this operation. I, I think Kevin's right. I think we have to convince Clint that he should go through with this. I mean, maybe if we all got together and told him how we whoa, feel. Oh, hey, Kev, come on. Bo is right about this. This is Pa's decision, all right? Not ours. I can't accept that. I mean, he's my father, too. I don't want to lose him. Even if there's only one, mil one chance of a million of him surviving the surgery, it beats giving up. Listen, I, I think what he's afraid of most is going ahead and having the surgery and coming out of it with brain damage. Believe me, Kevin, I, I don't want to lose him either. But right now, we got to look at this from his point of view. But isn't there a chance that he goes through the operation, he'll survive and be okay? Yeah, there is a chance. There's a very, very slight chance. Unfortunately, there's a much larger chance that if he survives, he will have brain damage. And that's what he's afraid of. He doesn't want to be a burden on the family, that's all. I'm sure he just wants to make the most of the time he's got left. And if this is going to happen, he wants us to remember him the way he is right now. I don't know how I could be so blind. I should have known something like this was going on with my brother. Yeah, Bo, you've been busy with Alex and her problems, the strike at the banner. Yeah, but he's having to deal with having nothing but two more months of his life. Right now, I've been, I've been giving him trouble about running off to Florida with his wife and not paying enough attention to the banner. Hey, Bo. Nobody knew what he was up against. I mean, I guess that's what Clint wanted. Apparently, Vicky didn't even know. How could you have known? You think he's making the right decision? Not going ahead with this operation? Bo, the bottom line is, if Clint thinks he made the right decision, I guess that's what counts. Yeah, I guess. 
Well, are Clint and Vicky going to tell Joey and Jessica what's going on? No, not for a while. What, do you think that's smart? Yes, yeah, I do. Yeah, they still are awfully young. Yeah, but they're very smart. They always pick up on what's going on. They're going to find out sooner or later. Well, not necessarily. Not if everyone pulls together and... No! Sort of... No! He's just really upset by the news. Oh, uh, Vicky, I have patience to see. I told oh. Clint earlier, but I can't stay any longer. I understand. Thank you very much for coming by. Now, if you need to talk to anyone, please call me. Thank you. I'm so grateful for all the support you've given him. And, and listen, you don't have to be strong 24 hours a day. Just share your feelings with him, even your fears. It will make it easier for Clint to share his feelings with you. Sandra? Yes? Are you leaving? Yeah, yeah, I yeah. am. Uh, gosh, I just wanted to say that I really feel awful about what happened and about what we, what we did, you know? I feel really awful about it. Uh, it seems that we jumped to a lot of the wrong conclusions. Well, given the circumstances, I can see why. Well, I hope you can forgive us. Oh, I already have. Now, uh, Vicki has my number. If you want to talk to me, uh, any of you, please call me. Thanks. Thank you. Very much. I'll just let myself out. Thank you. Vicki. I, uh, I just want to say that we, uh, we caused an awful lot of damage, oh, especially honey. to you. We did. And, and I mean, we, uh, we, we convinced you that Clint was having an affair and we made you doubt his love for you. And Well, I think you were trying to protect me, weren't you? Of course you were. Of course you were. I can only say if I'd seen Cord with an attractive woman like Sandra, I may very well have assumed the same thing. You certainly made an honest mistake. I know, but Clint told me that he wasn't having an affair, and I didn't believe him. Cord, you're not to blame for this, all right? It's not your fault. If anyone's to blame, it's Clint. He should have been honest with us sooner. But, of course, he had his own problems to, to deal with. Yeah, well, we sure as hell didn't help anything, did we? Anyway... We know everything now, and the truth is out. And now we can just forget about the past. And we can try very, very hard to make... to make the next few months as happy for him as we can, that's all. Jake. Hmm. Don't hate me for what I'm about to say. I know. I know. You want to postpone the wedding. Yeah, I, I just... I feel like parties and celebrations, it's not appropriate now. Okay, then we'll put it off for a little while, eh? I don't think the timing's right. We'll wait and see what happens with Clint and everything. Any chest pains, Asa? Yes. I've got a pain in my heart. A pain that none of your medicine can cure. Darling, can I get you a, a, a little more water? No. No. I, I would just like to be alone with Clint. flowers. We first brought you home from the hospital. She handed you to me. Told me to take you in the house. She went out and picked some blue bonnets for the parlor. I stood in the front yard, frozen. Why? I was afraid I was going to drop you. It's the first time I ever heard you say you were afraid of anything. I would bet my last cent on a well coming in. So I just knew in my bones it would work out. 
being a good father, taking care of you, scared me out to death. I made a lot of mistakes, Clint. And we've had our differences. That happens sometimes with fathers and sons. All in all, uh, I got no complaints. I think he did a pretty good job. All the years we lost. Well, that's just because I was too much like you, Paul. Too, too independent, too proud. But we found each other again, Paul. And we've had some good years. Not enough. Not enough. It's it's just it's just not right, Clint. That a son dies before his father. I mean, it's it's just not right. Paul, it's the it's the hand that was dealt us. All we can do is play it out. I love you so much. <laughs> With our son and daughter-in-law? Well, they'll, they'll be down in a minute. You know how newlyweds are. They lose track of time. <laughs> um, have the uh, blue plate. It's delicious. You really believe it's safe to eat this food? Uh, Winthrop, you promised you'd be on your best behavior. It's not easy. <laughs> What a pair. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> father? Hunter? This is Andy, my bride. And your father-in-law, Winthrop Guthrie. Hiya, Pop. Oh, I can tell by that look on your face you don't like me calling you that. Why don't I call you, uh, Winnie? I like that, Winnie. I think you'd prefer Father Guthrie. Oh, come on. That makes me sound like a priest. You're not a priest, are you? Um, what happened to the dress that we bought this morning? This is it. You chose this outfit? Mother, uh, Andy thought it needed a little fixing up. She's quite handy with a needle and thread, <laughs> among other things, right? Here. Oh, you better believe it, Bubba. So, uh... I, uh... Wondered, did you have a nice trip from Boston? Huh? Hunter here was telling me that you have a, your own private flying machine. Tell me it has beds in it. It must cost a fortune, huh? It has two sleeping compartments. Got a picture of it that I could see? In your wallet? Uh, no. <laughs> well, I would carry around an 8 by 10 with me. I don't have a picture of a jet or anything, but I, I do have a picture of my son. He's from my second marriage. My first husband didn't want me to have any children. But, uh... Once Hunter adopts this little angel, you're going to have to stop spending money on your private jets. You're going to have to put a little money away for our children. You have other children as well, then? Oh, no. But we're planning on having a little bubba of our own, aren't we? Mm -hmm, little babe. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh. oh, Father, you'll love him, though. He's a great little fellow. I'm sure you'll love him. Where is he? He's at the daycare center. Annie felt a little tired and a little depressed this morning. Last night, she lost more money at the track. Hmm. So I thought she needed a little bit of time, peace and quiet. You'll meet him soon enough. Well, why haven't we met him already? We didn't want to hit you with everything at once, did we? <laughs> Come on, let's eat. I'm starving. <laughs> Anything for you, sweetheart. Listen, Vicky, I have to get back to the station house. You call Thanks, me Rick. if you need anything, okay? I will. Thank you. 
Take care of that, Ray, folks. Bye, Ray. I was terrified he was going to have a massive heart attack right there and then. This was a big test for Asa, but I think he came through it pretty well, don't you? Uh, should I bring him to the hospital and have more tests? No, I don't think that's necessary, Renee. If he has a chest pain, I think make sure he takes one of his pills. But I think we've all underestimated Ace's strength. I wouldn't be surprised if he lives to be 100. Yeah, if he doesn't have any more shocks. I don't think he could ever have anything as shocking as what he heard this morning. Look, Max is here in the house with you. He can help you take care of Asa, keep him in line. And Renee, don't fuss over him so much. He hates that. <laughs> I know, I know. He tells me that himself all the time. Oh, God, Larry, thank you for everything. Okay. I'll see how everyone else is doing, Paul. Are you okay? Oh, yeah. Yeah. You know, Renee, I think that we should plant some Texas blue bonnets in front of our house. I think that's a lovely idea, Dad. Huh. Paul was right. This place does look like a wake. Darling, don't. Honey, I, I really don't want to see any long faces around here. A dying is a part of life. We all know that. So if you want to make me feel better, make me happy, go on with your lives. Clint, we can't just pretend that nothing's changed. I'm not asking you to. But the last thing I want is sympathy. What I do want is to is to live as normal a life as possible. And I can't do that alone. I need your help. What I'd like is to see some smiling faces and to hear people laughing. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, we can do that. All can right. We, folks? Yeah, I think so. Sure. Yeah. All right. Now, I got a lot to do in these next few months. In fact, we all do. So what do you say we get started? Fine, we're with you, son. But what do we do first? Well, first of all, you go home and get some rest. Hey, you, you hold on. Pa, look, you're looking worn out. Why don't you go home and get some rest today? Tomorrow you can take a new swing at it. All right, I, I'm too tired to argue. Okay, but tomorrow, tomorrow. you watch it. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye, Good night. Good night. Bye Renee. I'll walk you out. Bye. Okay, uh, Bo. Yeah. Let's see about getting this strike settled, shall we? How about setting up an appointment with Izzy this afternoon, if possible? Okay, I'll get right on it. I'll let you know when I can arrange something, okay? Terrific. Tell you what, uh, I'll head over to the office with you. That way I can keep an eye on things while you try to deal with the Thanks, strike. Thanks, son. I appreciate it. All right. Well, I I'm going to take Sarah for a walk over in the park. Hey, that's a good idea. Maybe Vicky and I will uh, catch up with you. That'd be great. We're going to be over by the duck pond then. All right. Great. Clint, I'm here whenever you need me, Max, okay? thanks. Good, good. How's the renovation coming? Well, I guess it's pretty good. We still have two shoes shellacked in the middle of the living room floor. <laughs> Which we should go uh, extricate right now. But any time you can, uh, you and Vicky come over and have dinner. Oh, uh, we'd soon. like that. We'd like that. I'll walk you to your car. I'm sorry I was so hard on you, Dad. Ah, forget it. You know, this wasn't an easy decision for me to make. I know. And I know you're not afraid. Nope, nope. I'm putting the biggest, uh, the biggest job on your shoulders. Oh, yeah? What is it? Well, you know, when I finally do get around to talking to Jessica and Joey, I'm probably not gonna tell them, you know, the whole thing, so. That's going to be a big load on you. I can handle it. I know you can. I know you can. And I'm going to be able to use your strength, too, son. I'm going to need it.
my God, are you all right? Oh. Do you want me to call Larry? No, 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 no. I just blacked out. Oh, no. Oh. Why is it all the stress? No, no stress doesn't have anything to do with it. Are you sure? Mm. Yeah. The doctors told me these black eyes might start happening. Uh. Well, can't they do something to prevent it? No, no. The fact that it's probably going to start becoming more frequent and lasting a little longer until. Well, until what? Please tell me. I want to know. Well, until I go into a coma. Oh. But, honey, there's no use worrying about that. No, when it happens, it happens. I don't understand how you can be like this. I don't know how you can be so calm and matter of fact. I couldn't have a month ago. I guess Sandra really helped you a lot, didn't she? Yes, she did. You know, one thing I found out was a fellow's own death is easier to deal with than the death of someone he loves. That is, once you get past the, the anger and the denial. But I don't think I'll ever get past that. Yes, you will. No one lives forever. Oh. oh, honey. I hope God knows that without you, my life is absolutely meaningless. It's meaningless. Darling, why don't you go upstairs and get some rest? Well, all those folders. I think I better get down to business. Get down to business or keep your mind off Clint? Both. Asa, I am so sorry about Clint's news. You know, driving home, I was thinking about all the mistakes I made with Clint growing up. I was one lousy father. I don't for a minute believe that. And I'm sure that Clint disagrees with it. You see, he loves and respects you, as does Bo. You know, Clint really got the worst of it, being the firstborn. But I didn't do much better by Bo. I was never home enough. I never understood enough. And I just didn't really care enough. Darling, I think we'd all probably like to turn the clock back. I mean, Lord knows there are things way back then that I would love to change, but whatever shortcomings you had when Clint was growing up, you've made up for in a million ways. Fate can play awful tricks on us, can it? What makes you say that? All these years, I find out that Max is my son. And little did I know that I would have to give up a son in return. Aunt Andy! Aunt Andy! Hi, Hi. son! Hi, sweetheart. Aunt Andy? Well, he's not really my son in the real sense of the word. Son? What do you mean, your son? Who are you? I'm Julia Medina. My daughter is Al's mother. We've just been to visit her. You took Al to Statesville? Statesville is a prison, isn't it? Yes. Yes, it is. I wonder if you'd excuse us. Al is rather hungry. Come on, darling. Let's go and see what goodies Wanda's got in the kitchen. Come on. I don't understand any of this. Children, prisons, Bubba, babe. Father. How in the world could you allow yourself to get involved in this lunacy. It's simply beyond my comprehension. I've had quite enough. Come on, Helen. Let's go. We Helen! Have I... I 
think, uh, I think he's really hurt. I think we went a little too far. I think I better go check on him. Look, it's not your fault. You were terrific. You're the best friend a guy could have. You guys put on quite a show. Sent those Guthrie's packing. So why aren't you smiling? Started out as a joke. A way to get Hunter's parents off his back and out of his life so, you know, he could live it. Are you saying it didn't work? No, it, it did, but, you know, it just wasn't fun anymore. We hurt their feelings, and it wasn't right. Well, for, you know, it's the difference between you and the Guthrie's. What? Well, you care about people, about who they are, about where they've come from. And I bet if you played it straight with them, they'd accept you. I mean, Hunter. Hunter sure likes you. Well, we're just friends, and that's why I decided to play the stupid charade to begin with. Well, maybe, but... No. I, I, I think that's one of the reasons. I don't think that's... It's the only reason. Hunter... Asked me to pretend to be his wife. I said yes because we're friends. Why are you looking at me like that? I, I'm not. I just you don't have to pretend with me. We're friends too. Pretend what? Pretend that you're not attracted to the guy. I mean, it's obvious to me. I say, hey, go for it. You know, he's a real Mr. America. He's fun. He's talented. Uh, if he accepts his grandfather's trust fund, he's big time rich. Have you been sipping a little too much beer down there at the end of the bar? Why are you blushing? I am not yeah. blushing. I'm not embarrassed at all. Hunter and I are friends. I've got it all wrong. We're just friends. That's all we're ever going to be. Maybe not. But it's up to you. There's such a big difference between us. We act differently. We, we were brought up in different places. We, we, we want different things from life. I mean, it's amazing that we're even friends to begin with. Andy, whatever you said. Hold a second. Briggs wants this an hour ago. Okay, fine. Just wait. Uh, okay, are you going to go with us or not? Talk to me. Yeah, okay. No, you're not going to regret this. Thanks a lot. Tell Briggs that it's a go on the Jacobs ad, okay? Full page. If you're too busy, I'll... No, no. Sit down. I just wanted to thank you for the use of the banners, Morg. I faxed my story to Brussels this morning. My editors called to say they loved it. Ah, uh, that's great. It's great, Cass. Well, you look terrible. Didn't you get any sleep last night? I think you're working too hard. No. No, I'm not. Well, where are Clint and Cord to help you? Why aren't they here? Clint's, uh, Clint's at Landfair. Oh, something's wrong. What is it? Is the paper going to fold? N no. No. Um, Clint called the, uh, the family together for a meeting to tell us that he's only got a couple of months to live. I'm sorry. I was going to be so brave and courageous. I can't even get through the morning without falling apart. Oh. Honey, you're still recovering from the shock. It'll take a while. Look, you're the one who's always had the most faith. Don't let it fail you now. I'll try. I promise. Okay. I think I'll... Uh, Get a little fresh air on the terrace. Okay. If you don't mind, sweetheart, I'd like to just have a little time alone. Sure. I'll be okay if I if I need you. I'll call you. Okay. set to leave for CJ's graduation. Boy, Clint would really be proud seeing his grandson graduating from Harvard with honors, huh? Oh, yes, he would be very proud. And I am, too. 
Please, give CJ my love. I wish you would change your mind and come along with us. No, I don't think so. Vicki, you haven't left the house in years. I know. But you know, without Clint, my life has no meaning. Honey, I've sort of come to a decision, and uh, I'd like you're okay. Has Duane demanded more money from you? No. I think she finally believes that the well is dry. How's your friendship with Renee developing? Very nicely, thank you. Renee is a lovely, good, kind person. She's extremely concerned about Asa's health, and she's doing everything in her power to avoid shocking or unusual situations so he doesn't have another heart attack. <laughs> How is everything else going in the house? Well, Alex Olenoff is staying there at the moment. It seems that some man she's responsible for putting behind bars has threatened her life. Oh, and Duane's daughter's staying there. I don't know for how long, but she's not going back to Texas, not at the moment, anyway. Are you sure? Well, Renee told me. No reason for her to make something like that up. If the daughter is staying with her mother in the mansion, then Renee must have approved. I suppose so. Has Renee become close to the girl? I have no idea, Carlo. Find out, I want to know. Why? What difference does it make? You're only interested in getting Renee to love you again, which, in my opinion, will never happen. So, what does Leanne have to do with anything? Something tells me the girl staying here in Landview will have a great deal to do with me in the future. I really don't see how. Once I put all the pieces together, we're going to have to keep a close eye on Duane and her daughter. A very close eye. I remember when Jamie Sanders shot Clint. He was blind for a while, wasn't he? Yeah. yeah and then uh, one of the fragments uh, shifted. He regained his eyesight. And now it looks like one of the fragments has shifted again, and it's going to cost him his life. Can't the doctors operate? Yeah, they can, but there's no guarantee. They. Chances are he'll never have his uh, faculties intact. And, you know, chances of that are like they're slim to none. Oh, my God. I'm so sorry. I'm sorry, Cassie. I shouldn't have just blurted it out like that. You don't blurt news like that out to people. You know? Oh, it's okay. You don't have to apologize. I suppose you want to keep this in the family. Yeah, yeah, I would like to do that. How's Vicky holding up? Uh, Vicky was, she was pretty good this morning. She's in shock, and uh, I don't know what's going to happen when the shock wears off about this. I guess we just have to, we have to figure a way to go on with our lives. Briggs has called twice. Oh. Uh, I haven't even had a chance to proofread this yet. You're doing that, too? Yeah, yeah, the proofreaders are out on strike, so we're proofreading. Everybody's doing everything. Tell Briggs that I'll have it there in five minutes, okay? Ten minutes at the most. And hold all my calls unless it's easy. Why don't I help you? I did all kinds of things for the paper in Belgium, including proofing. I am really good with a red pencil. You take, you take those three columns, and I'll take these three. Kes. Yeah. Thanks. Anytime you want to talk, or go have a pizza and a beer, or you just don't want to be alone, you give me a call, okay? Okay.
Well, it's a little early to go swimming, but anything else you want to do, sure. It's fine by me. Don't be too quick to say yes. Why? What do you want to do? You know, when I was talking to Kevin a little while ago and told him that I wasn't afraid to die, I meant that. I know. I take great comfort in that. Because you have trust and faith in God, right? Yes. Well, so should I. You know, it just dawned on me that I've been thinking of myself and not thinking of the family. Well, I think the time comes, sweetheart, when you have to concentrate on what's best for yourself and not on no. this. No, when you're part of a family, you have to consider their feelings as well as your own. Now, you know, there's still a one in ten chance that my, my time isn't up yet. So if it's okay with you, I was thinking that I'd uh, go ahead with the operation and just let God decide whether my time was up or not. Does that mean yes? God will be with us. I know he will. Oh, thank you. 